Community Re Redevelopment Agency Advisory Committee meeting for this Monday, November the 6th, 2017. Can we have roll call, please? Mr. Aristide? Present. Um, Ms. Estime Irvin? Present. Ms. Geimer? Present. Mr. McDermott? Present. Dr. Millian? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Sanchez? Here. We have quorum. Okay. All right, can we please begin with the um, <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to approve the minutes. I so move. Second. Second. Okay, all, thank, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, the <coughs> first item is going to be item agenda two, the resolution to approve the ratification of the DEA architect's contract. Okay. Um, the procurement department is here to explain, but as you recall, um, for the past summer, this past summer, uh, during summer recess, the mayor and council and the CRA board passed the resolution giving the, the executive director and the city manager to take up any business matter that needed to be done. Yay. All right. Um, Please note that Kenny Each here is along with our attorney. esteemed attorney. We may look to stop and go back to the chair. Oh, no, I well, it's up to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, you want to go back to item number one now that you have quorum yes. for this? Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Reynolds? Um, item number one is in a property that I have an interest in, so I'm going to recuse myself. Okay. Please find attached a business attraction grant request from TDH Wings doing business as Wingstop, located at 927-929 Northeast 125th Street. This location formerly housed the Grateful Bread. It was a small bakery since 2010 until the owner's passing. The new business um, that Mrs. Howell is bringing to this area is going to bring life to the corridor and it's a very attractive type of business um, that I think everybody's been asking for. Um, she, Ms. Tina Howell is here if you have any questions. She's opened several other wing stops, one in Miami Gardens in, uh, as of 2004. She, has, she plans on hiring 25 employees, 15 full-time and 10 part-time. She's, she's gotten involved in all the cities that she's opened up wing stops at with the community, with after school programs, the kids, and even I think she had mentioned that in Miami Gardens she does something with um, ex-felons and she does those kind of community um, programs. This property is about 1,200 square feet. It will accommodate seating for 20. It's going to be a complete gutted renovation for a full kitchen in the back. Um, with new signage, painting, awnings, and, and so on. She has provided three bids. In the bids, if you look at the proposals, these bids are from the Wingstop approved contractors. Mm -hmm. So they've been vetted, we've also vetted them out, but it is the franchise that gives them um, the blessing. The lowest bidded amount for that was 329,000. However, the total cost of the project mm -hmm. is estimated at 369,780 because of the security system, the other, um, the accordion shutters, the tent, and uh, the other items um, that are the total cost of the project. She's asking for the business attraction grant, which is, as you recall, $150,000. It would be st still less than, um, it's, her total cost of the project is $369,000, so it'll still be more than the 50-50 match requirement. Um, the CRA staff may, it recommends approval. Um, if you have any questions, um, Ms. Howell is here. Um, she has been, we've been talking via phone and so on for a while now, and she's done her due diligence, she's, she's worked, 
And if you look at the package, there are several articles that they've done on her, on the work that she's done in the community that she's been in. So like I said, we recommend approval, unless you have any other questions. Yeah. You know, Ms. Ms. Howell is here to answer. Okay. Would you like to um, step up and introduce yourself? And Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tina Howell. Thank you for having me and affording me this opportunity to develop in your community. Okay, would you like to t tell us a little bit about what you're going to be developing there? Okay, so the actual project cost is about $540,000. I used to live in Dallas, Texas, and in 2002, I decided to move back to Miami. Grew up in Coconut Grove moved into uh, Miami Gardens, and um, I wanted to come back home. And they didn't have Wingstop in South Florida at the time. The franchise originated in Dallas, Texas, so I thought it was a great idea to bring Wingstop to Miami. And so I did and opened the first Wingstop restaurant in Dade County in 2004 in Miami Gardens, which was then called Carroll City. And I eventually opened one on Taft Street in Hollywood and divested interest there, 167th and 826, divested interest there. I recently opened one in Miami Lakes on 186 and 67th. And um, North Miami is an area that I felt like would be a good opportunity for me. I've been with Wingstop a long time and so they allowed me or afford me the opportunity to pick my development area and I chose this area because I saw a need. One of the things that I do pride myself in is hiring what they call the unhirable and if you look at the packet, Entrepreneur Magazine did an article on me and um, I'm very honored. Last year just talking about my philosophy. I was one of those kids who wasn't supposed to make it. I was making what D minuses, F plus at Coral Gables um, High School. And at some point I decided I wanted to do different from what I saw everyone else around me doing, including my mom, and um, make a difference in my own life. And so I have a passion for helping young men and women, and not just young. One of my best employees was my dishwasher 13 years ago. He's a Dominican young man, and now he's my general manager. He went from having dreads and saggy pants, and be being a convicted felon, if you saw him now, you'd be very proud and look at him and know that he looks like a very polished young man and I've mentored him into helping him in his personal and financial life so that's what I do that's what I have a passion for when I hire employees if they look like people who can't get a job anywhere else then I look past the resume or not having a resume and try to look at the potential for their, their success and play a part in helping these people to acclimate themselves back into the community and maybe help us have one less individual that might look at taking what we work hard for and helping them to learn how to make their own money. You know, I have a passion for the business. Wingstop's a great, great opportunity, great business. It's profitable for me and it's also a very good opportunity to bring new business to the community. Wingstop is now an international franchise. So they've got franchises now all over the world so I definitely feel like it would benefit the community I'm sure you'd have a lot of people traveling to North Miami to grab some lemon pepper wings which is our number one seller so yeah thank you very much you're welcome a wonderful thank wonderful you. concept and a wonderful thing that you're doing thank you anybody have any questions mm -hmm. for approval. Oh. oh I just moved for approval do you also own the one on uh, Hallandale Beach Boulevard? No, no, I don't. Okay, because I know the CRA up there assisted that one as well. So oh, I, okay. I the franchise that has been assisted by other CRAs. Okay. okay. Uh, we have a motion to approve. Second. Do you want to hear a second? second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much and welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.
Please also note that Blanca Cobo has joined us. That's tied up. I know. We were traffic. Told traffic's terrible. Did it become 126 Cobo? Yeah. Uh, when I turned the corner where I used to be calmed down, it was blocked. You couldn't drive there. No. I had to go around on 119. Yeah. Yeah. The next. Okay. The so next item, item for your con consideration. Mm -hmm. Um, we are presenting to you a ratification of an agreement that was done during the summer recess. Um, this is BA Architects. Um, they were, this was an item that was already in, in the budget from the last fiscal year and we were trying to get it done in, in a timely manner. We did use the procurement list of approved architects and engineers, their CCNA list, to identify an architect that was willing to do this. this is for the Mocha Courtyard, not the plaza. I just want to split up so you won't get confused. So um, as you know, like I said, during the recess, the city manager and slash executive director of the CRA and the city of North Miami is allowed to do um, anything that is necessary, including getting into agreements with um, organizations and companies for the betterment and to continue the work for the CRE and the city of North Miami. So this is the same thing that they do at the city council. The only item that the manager had executed, which is above the $25,000 procurement guideline, was this item, which is to be a architects for $42,530. Uh, Mr. Philip Ford is the assistant director of public uh, of procurement, if you have any additional questions. And um, our attorneys here as well. Um, we're just asking you to ratify, to approve the ratification of this agreement that was done during the summer recess. This is not what Mr. Geimer presented here, right? No, no, no. It's two different projects. Mr. Geimer with Leo A. Daly is the Mocha Plaza. Mm -hmm. As you recall, we had approved the beautification of the Mocha building. Right. We only did the painting part of it. And then staff changes and other delays occurred, and we never finished it. Yeah. Now we're getting back on track. What we, what the acting MOCA director and the team felt would be a better investment was to redo the MOCA courtyard in the back to make it a more user-friendly um, mm -hmm. area, you know, mm -hmm. so you can have receptions, be, uh, better, less grass, better mm -hmm. concrete and things like that. So this is just hiring the architectural firm for them to come with design plans like, they, like we've done already in the past. Like I said, Mr. Ford is here. If you, he's the assistant director of Mr. procurement. Ford, if you have any, any questions. Uh, uh, well, the, the item itself is uh, pretty self-explanatory, as Rasha explained. Uh, during your recess, the executive director slash city manager has the authority to approve on your behalf. Uh, this is just a ratification of his approval of that item. Uh, the city, uh, through procurement, established a pre-qualified pool of architectural firms. Uh, those firms are used to uh, do task orders for the city throughout the city to include CRA. Uh, this particular firm, BEA, is one of those pre-qualified firms, and they were selected for this particular project. Uh, traditionally, when we uh, select a firm for a task order, they are given the scope of work and then uh, asked to provide a technical and cost proposal. Uh, staff then goes into negotiations uh, with that firm. And the price that you see, $42,000 is the negotiated price. So further on down the road, uh, we're going to develop the plans to improve the courtyard uh, as a result of this item. And uh, Rasha, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, uh, we will come back at some point in time with those plans for their approval before construction is actually started. Okay, thanks, yeah. Mr. Ford. Uh, is there any questions? Y yeah. Um, so this is to, we're hiring the architects to develop the plan for the courtyard. Right. Is that right? Yeah, that's a plan. To design, design it. a new courtyard. Like, are they doing the drawings and all that yes. stuff too? Yep. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. And then it goes out to bid. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Now, the other question is, what's going on with the, with the redoing the plaza? The architect, well, can you, we can't, yeah, let's can just do this time. and then I'll answer I the know, question. It's like, you know, it's like we approve stuff and it just never happens. No, they are actually working on the design and the plans, but I, I don't want to <coughs> mix it up. 
but they are working on it and he has to go out to, to bid it's going to come back to you but i thought we were going to start on it last summer the architects are actually working on the plans they are working on the design plans it doesn't it's not <coughs> so something anything that you tell us we should go okay add one year to it as far as completion no i, don't, I, I wouldn't think that but well i would <laughs> no not you no <laughs> So anyway, on this particular item, do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Do second. I have a second? I second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mr. Boyd, thank you very much. Sir. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> Next item. Um, this is for the transit-oriented development con uh, and major corridors conceptual design master plan. As you recall, we had it in the budget. Um, we put it out to bid and unfortunately delays occurred due to Hurricane Irma and these other items. So we had to move this item back into this current year's budget. Um, Mr. Ford will elaborate on the details as, as to how we got here. The representative from the company that we were able to negotiate uh, with, IBI Group, uh, they're here if you have any you know, questions. But Mr. Ford, the floor is yours. Okay, again, um, this particular item, uh, a little different from the previous item as far as the pre-qual pool. Uh, the previous item pre-qual pool is a standing pool that we use as needed. Uh, RFQ uh, 581617, which is the request for qualifications that we use to select the IBI group, was a specific solicitation where we wanted a firm to come in and do the design for the uh, train station area and master corridor. And so the procurement process, we went through the process of evaluating uh, firms that responded to the RFQ uh, to determine responsiveness. Uh, one of the firms um, was determined to be non-responsive, uh, meaning they did not meet the minimum qualifications of their RFQ. Uh, so subsequently, the firms that were qualified were passed to the Evaluation Selection Committee for uh, evaluating their criteria. Uh, we did a two-tier evaluation where the initial evaluation was done based upon the four corners of what was submitted in the responses uh, for determination of a ranking, initial ranking. A second-tier evaluation was done where all of the firms had an opportunity to make oral presentations. Uh, the oral presentations uh, were not an opportunity for those firms to revise their submittal, but to clarify and answer questions that the committee members had. Uh, the final rankings were done. A recommendation was sent to the executive director uh, to recommend, to seek approval to the enter into negotiations with the higher, highest ranked firm. Uh, that firm, being the IBI group, uh, I believe we had maybe uh, two face-to-face uh, -face negotiations, and we communicated via email regarding uh, the scope of services and their technical cost proposal as well. And so what you have in front of you tonight uh, is the final negotiated results. Um, the total cost is going to be $160,271. Uh, additionally, we, we have in your item as one of the attachments, we have all of the tasks that the firm will be providing to uh, develop this, this plan for the train station and uh, master corridor. Uh, we have uh, laid out a time frame of having uh, the plans uh, completed. Uh, I want to say, it, was it next August? Uh, Rasha, <coughs> was it next August? Yes. So, uh, and we won't need that year extension, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, I'll that, talk yeah. to you in August. Yeah. Barring any natural disasters, barring any natural disasters, I think we'll be Yeah, barring any natural disasters, yes, okay. absolutely. So, So are there any questions from okay, any committee have any members? Uh, questions from uh, I'd like to uh, representatives of IBI here tonight. Yes, yes absolutely. Yeah. 
Good evening, Patricia Ramuto, IBI Group, and this is Vivian Brooks. Um, we represent the part of the team that will be facilitating this corridor study and master plan. Um, we are an architectural engineering, urban planning, uh, transit-oriented uh, design firm. And based on our analysis and our scope of work, I don't know if you have the project approach in front of you, um, but we've identified, based on the scope that was presented in the RFQ, our approach to um, addressing the city's needs for this, this master plan and corridor study. Um, I'll let Vivian address a few of the uh, particulars on the urban planning part. Um, I'll be focusing more on the infrastructure, um, but we have a team that is ready to help the city um, to achieve this goal. I'm, I'm sure you're all aware of the um, Tri-Rail Coastal Link that your, is, your name I'm Vivian address. Brooks, sorry, um, that is coming um, through South Florida in the next few years. That is going to be provide a great opportunity for the city of North Miami in providing transportation that doesn't involve I-95. So, and it's, it's, it's affordable as well. Um, our, we are tasked with understanding all of your current plans, which we have looked at them. How does that help the transit-oriented development area? We're also tasked with how do we connect the neighborhoods Johnson and Wales and FAU, some of your bigger employees, to that area. Um, you already have a pretty good transit system. Uh, you have one of your own, which is great. But how do we connect more people? Getting input from your residents, what are their needs? What is their um, uh, need for transportation? How many of them work in the city? How many work outside the city and really could use this? Also looking at your code. How does your code um, maybe need to be modified or amended? to help uh, create this new thing. Branding is an important thing. You have to brand this so people understand what it is um, and how it works. It really is a comprehensive new way of putting a city, connecting a city together, um, putting bike paths, better pedestrian pathways, signage. It's a very large undertaking. And other cities are starting this process. You're ahead of the game, I'll tell you right now. But it is um, a great opportunity for the city, and I think you will see um, major interest from um, investment with this plan. Do you have any questions? Can you tell us a little bit about your firm, please? You, I, I see you have uh, local preferences. Are you in the city? Um, we have CEPCO is one of our partners. They are in the city. Um, they're an engineering firm. Uh, I'm a native. I went to um, Williams Jennings Bryan School, um, oh. elementary <laughs> school. So I'm very familiar with the city. So we are lo we are local. We also have access. We have 67. Um, we're located in. We have 67 offices throughout the world. So we have access to highly sophisticated people. Whatever we need, we have. And IBI has done over 125 transit-oriented development plans throughout the world. So that is one of our fortes that we're known for. So that's what we do. Uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm seeing here, this is our last chance if we're going to turn the city around and develop it. And I think this is a, a key component. Yes. And uh, the Urban Land Institute has stated several times uh, live, work, and play in the same area. We need mass transit. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And I, I didn't get this. Well, I, I will review this in the next week. But uh, your scope is that going to have any input on the, the local streets? Absolutely. Local about development, height, density, Absolutely. types of businesses that we should be yes. to bring in? Yes. Okay. Mix of businesses. What is the financial viability of um, development here? What's What are the gaps that need to be filled in? Absolutely. That's um, you're absolutely correct that it's an investment to your city. Can you mention um, they have an economist? Yes, um, Kevin. Yes, and Kevin Griner. A gentleman who's an expert in affordable housing. Yes, Mr. Gray. Can they evaluate. So they will be looking at what is the uh, marketability of this area. And how do well, we put let's, it together let's properly? Let me cut to the chase. We have plenty of affordable housing. <laughs> now is the time. Now is the time to get some people in here with disposable income. One of the biggest complaints that I hear is I have to get on I-95 and fight my way down a brickle every day. 
Okay, that is a big complaint. I'll say it again. I said it. From, if we, I'd rather have a wealthy city helping poorer people than a poor city helping nobody. And the development that I see coming out, other than uh, what we have on the boulevard, it was stagnant, and we've been stagnant for years. So this yes. is uh, what, what I see as a there to move this city absolutely. You have developers that are city. already looking Thank at you. land along this corridor. Right, yeah. They are already assembling land on this corridor. So it's the cities that get the their projects, their plans done so that they can be viewed online are going to be the ones that are going to get ahead of that curve, the ones that are going to be project ready, so to speak. So you're absolutely right. I agree. Uh, you do need to um, increase your tax base here. And that's what the CRA is for. I would imagine you're going to have community meetings. So yeah. Yes, we do. And we you have will be at every single so one of them. I, I, there was one thing I, I we all will. would like <laughs> to say. <laughs> one thing I think is quite important. And I was going to suggest that I'll do it right now. Uh, before the Planning Commission, I think it would be important that the CRA come up there and let, let, uh, let us know on the Planning Commission what our goal is, what our objectives are. The same thing with the economic development specialist. I'd like to see our guy come up there from the city. And also I'd like to see the public works director come up there as far as our in infrastructure capacity. Uh, I understand uh, with our infrastructure currently, we can only build 5,000 units. Now I can't get a straight answer on that. That would be part of our analysis. Well, 5,000 units, dwelling units, and what I'd like to know is if, okay, when other people that are on our service area that are outside the corporate uh, entry, uh, does that count against us? Let's say the jockey club puts up a new tower. Does that take away? I was going to suggest that, but I'll bring it up now. Thank you. Okay. That was a, that's good. Write it all down for the first meeting. Uh, I understand that the funding for Charrail on the county level, that there's it's just flat, that it's in total shambles. I think you're talking, some people get Brightline confused with No, I'm talking about Tri Brightline. Bright, um, Bright, Brightline is on, on, it's on track. Right, it's and, on track. And it's a private entity. I understand that the, the, the total, total uh, yeah, that the whole, the, whole, uh, the whole mass transit issue is in a shambles, including Tri-Rail at the county level. Um, the money for the Tri-Rail Coastal Link, a lot of it will be, uh, it'll be layered, tiered funding. A lot of it's federal dollars. It's going to be federal dollars. Now, locally, to build your actual station, your stop, um, you know, the infrastructure you need to get people, passengers on and off, is, is going to probably be a partnership of the county and the cities and the CRAs. This um, coastal link actually goes through almost every CRA in South Florida. So that's um, a really good project for CRAs to do because it, it does build up your downtown. So I, I can't answer for the federal dollars, but um, I have been involved in this from its infancy, um, this project. I'm very interested in um, South Florida. I grew up here. But I understand that, they, they, that the negotiations for Tri-Rail fell apart with the FEC. I am not, that is not my understanding. I have not heard anything about that. that I, I get all kinds of information on a daily basis. I have not heard one thing about well, I that. Hope you're right, I hope yeah. I'm right too because I was getting very discouraged. that would be very bad for okay. South Florida. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Motion to approve. Okay, hold on. Any other um, any other questions? Okay, do we have a motion to, I have, we have a motion so to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We look forward to working with your community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the executive director's report, I was not able to, um, I apologize to get uh, Chief Beige here, but we haven't had a chance to provide you with an update on the activities. He provided one from June 16th to September 30th for your review and, and so on and so forth. One of the items that we're going to be bringing to you um, moving forward, and he's working with the procurement department, is the the tag reader program, what's mm -hmm. called the license plate. Yes. Yes. Okay, we're going to be doing pilot programs uh, on the CRA major corridors, 125th yeah, Street, the tag yeah, reader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they call them license plate read LPRs, right. right? So the LPRs are going to be coming. Um, they have to put it out to bid. And once they've um, secured the, the, the vendor, they'll be bringing it to you. And then Chief Beige will come and talk to you about it. The, the other item that we've already started is to help. As you recall, 
our grants allowed for security cameras and so on and so forth. Um, we are now connecting with the, um, the software, the internet software with the company that has the, what do you call that? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Mr. Uh, Ford. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> got distracted, I apologize. Um, yes, as I was saying, the company that does the, the body cams, mm -hmm. the software and so on and so forth, they're the same companies that are providing the backup software for anybody who, so any grantee who does get the CCD cameras from us, they, they get the first initial connection with that, so it would give access to the police as opposed to like, when you get a security camera, you get the tape if they're looking for it, whereas you give the police access to the front of your building, the reception area, mm -hmm. and that's it. So that's one way also to, and it's gonna, it's called North Miami Connect. Um, Chief Faith has been working on a logo. Um, and so every business owner that has this program that, you know, that's part of the grant that we're providing, you'll see we are members of the North Miami Connect program. So it's a way, one, for people to see that you know, we have all eyes and, and the business is safe. And then, so once the, the bid is done and they've finalized who the vendor is for the license plate readers, we're looking at doing a pilot program on 125th Street, West Dixie, Northwest 7th Avenue, uh, like 119th and, and Northwest 7th Avenue, and then 125th Street here, and then West Dixie. That, that license plate reader, that's supposed to notify you if you get a hit on it. So on if, a, if a car has an APB out on it, it's stolen or something, a bolo, a bolo out, out on it, it, the license plate reader will read it and they will notify the police that this car is in the neighborhood. Such and such a direction. Yeah, okay. and then that's it. It doesn't keep your stuff or anything. So in terms of as a business, if they pull up in front of your business, the police <coughs> already know that this, you know, this is a potential something happening. So, we're trying to be in the, we're trying to do the community policing in the innovative side. So I just wanted to share that with you. Those things are going to be coming to you soon. Um, last, I have two other items. One, um, it's not on the agenda. I just brought you the best of the, you know, best of the FRA. We are on page 18. We did get the award. Yay. Um, so, you know, please, these are your, this is for you. This is your bragging rights that you are part of this organization that's now being recognized statewide. Um, and I have extras if you wanna use it for your, your, your marketing and, and so on. Congra Lastly. Congratulations, Rocha. Congratulations, thank you. congratulations to, you, to us all. <laughs> no to you. It was a group no. effort. Um, the Iron <laughs> Manor update, Iron Manor's update. Um, pretty much, as you recall, that was one of the projects that we were working on. It was delayed because the city got it designated as a historical um, fountain and so now we have to go through additional steps with the county preservation board right. and the is that the one that's the one on, Dix on Dixie yes that's the one on Dixie and the reason why it's it so is ugly. it was on our li no. the reason why it was on our <laughs> list is because it's one of the gateways into the downtown all those areas as you recall when the downtown master plan was done those were the gateways that they wanted us to do with the signage and update the place for people to, to come through um, our chair is also president of the uh, Homeowners Association, and he will be hosting us, meaning the city, Kent Walia will be coming, and a representative from Miami-Dade County um, the Pre Historic Preservation um, Board will be doing a presentation on the fountain, the history, and for us and everybody to understand what it means to renovate <laughs> a historical <laughs> monument, and also to show um, some potential designs and signage yeah, the and so architect on. Will be there. <coughs> yeah, um, from Corradino. So that's November twenty first, right? At Sunkiss Grove. I know at the Griffin. At Griffin, I'm sorry, Griff I have Sunkiss Grove on. When it. it's Tuesday, the, the November twenty first, seven thirty at the Griffin Adult Center. At the Griffin Adult Center. <laughs> so if anybody's interested, they can go. Um, Where's the fountain at? West Dixie Highway and like a hundred and thirty. Thirty third. Thirty third. Yeah, it's a big, tall, white. It's on the. It's on the that, 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 actually, it's, over here. actually, it's Ninth Avenue and West Dixie. That's where they. Ninth. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but what's yeah. the cross? Because yeah. Ninth Avenue and West Dixie. Yeah, I remember one time Sometimes. the Parks Department planted asparagus grass in there. It looked like great. Got another sign, and we made it into an armed forces. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. We had all the service emblems around services. it. Yeah. So there's 
got through, I don't know how many resolutions. I've been here since 1970. Well, <laughs> so now that it's a historic. It's the best it's ever looked. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Clark. <laughs> now that it's a historic uh, monument, we do have to respect um, whatever the his State County Historic Board says. So we'll be following their guidelines and they will be presenting the history of the monument and what the do's and the don'ts and the architect will be there also to talk about what it is that they're proposing to do. So hopefully yes. that'll, once the county approves it, then we can start doing the work. November what is that? 21st. No, it's November the 21st, which is a Tuesday night at 7.30 at the Griffin Adult Center. The architects will be there. Um, the people from the Historical Society will be there. So it's gonna be an interesting <coughs> evening, so try mm -hmm. to come. Um, one last announcement, there's a housing uh, workshop um, on Thursday and Griffin at Griffin Center, right? Thank what you. Kind of housing. Oh, I, just, I thought you said housing. I thought you said a hygiene, no. a hygiene workshop. <laughs> All right. So as you recall, we are mandated to do certain housing initiatives and we are funding the city's housing department. So that is one of the initiatives, <coughs> bless you. Um, they will be working on, again, they're doing actually for Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Councilman Bianeme and Councilman, Councilwoman Keys for both their districts. Um, and for us, again, as you recall, the CRA, they have to be in the geographic boundaries, like Griffin Estates is not in the That's CRA. What's the date on that? That's th this Thursday. This Thursday? Yeah, at the Griffin? Griffin, Griffin Adult Six Center. At Adult Center. I, I can, you know. So it'll be there as well. So that's another one of the projects that we are supporting um, and letting you know. It's for rehab, as you recall. It's for owner-occupied, single family. It could be duplex. Priorities will be given to seniors, um, disabled people, people with uh, fixed income, veterans. Uh, if you know anybody who lives in the area in those districts, you, it has to be in this year, as you know. Please ask them to come and attend to get the information so they can sign up. Let's see what the price range actually will be. Well, the grant is, we provide a $20,000 grant for rehab. Um, so usually when you apply, the housing department will send an inspector to review to see what the needs are and so on and so forth. We, for the CRA funds, it'll be more of a rehab versus a paint beautification project. Because as you recall, we, you know, we, we had gotten so many, uh, so, much, so many criticisms about how we use the housing funds before. So most of the requests that we'll be reviewing and processing will be for rehabs, the windows, the roofs, um, those issues that they need life safety issues. If you're disabled, you need to make the house more ADA um, with the ramp and so on and so forth. So those are the things that we're gonna be focusing on. But the cap is at 20,000 per unit. Now how many uh, grants are you gonna be able to pass on? Well, we have, as you recall, we, are, we have budgeted for 59 units whether it's a home or whatever, for 59 units in the CRA side. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. Uh, the city has money in their general fund. I think it was like about 400,000 that they had put in. For us, it's we have uh, 1.1 million and change in the housing uh, you know, program. So you'll be also get, be getting invitations for ribbon cuttings and those types of things once the housing project okay. starts. I'm done. Okay. And if well, it's no public here, but uh, any old business? Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, any new business? Does the attorney have, do you have any report for it? I do not have any report. Okay. <laughs> 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 other, other than my, uh, my, my, my senior my daughter, the bar expert, and uh, spent most of the congregation here in North Miami on Saturday. Oh, oh, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. 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 And I haven't seen her, and I didn't get a chance. No, somebody no. Yeah. 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 Who was asking me a question? I believe I'm here. Yeah, I yeah, apologize. Can anyone? You know, we, we have the panel seven each day, <coughs> and one of the things I remember we used to do in Illinois when we had a new business opening or a beautiful property coming up, they were actually out there. Our community TV was actually out there with a ribbon cutting and all that. Is there is there a way we can look at that or examine that? Maybe funding something like that to the CRA for next year or, or getting it on the budget. I, I think it would be important. I see a lot of stuff on, on 77, but nothing really to the so community. Yeah, yeah. And, so that's, and, and, and it's, it's, it's a. Like you're talking about this brewery, you know, let, let's say you have that coming in, bang, you have it on community TV or the 
this new business coming and you have it on community TV, it would be nice. So that's and the mayor would be there with ribbon cutting and you know it is that's a programming <laughs> issue and the managers kinda look into it, looking into it right now and that's why we have the PIO department, they've done a few shifts and they're working on that. Um, the, that's something that they have to handle as the city. It's not something that this, it would be recommended for the CRA to fund. We do fund, as you know, the ribbon cuttings, and it is taped. So we have it filmed. We have the pictures, photographers, videographers, city staff attend it with, and, and film it. The issue mainly is the programming aspect getting it of on, it. Getting it on the so Yeah, and the programming. Do, do we so record that? We do record it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Part of the grand it's opening getting grant it on the air. is getting it on the air. Oh, okay. Um, we usually, you know, when we have these functions, we usually have the city IT department there filming it to, okay. to upload right. it and so, so we on. Do so. Okay. We do film and we do, we do take pictures. Like I said, the only issue is really the programming aspect of it, you know, making sure that it's done and, and, and so on. Yeah. Ms. Kobo had a question and maybe yeah. somebody yes, can Monica. answer. Um, right next to Elaine Gordon Park, on the other side of the railroad track where the car merchants park in, they have a whole bunch of. Uh, Equipment, heavy equipment, working uh, uh, along 136th Street. What are they about. doing? I don't know. I, I walk over there, and um, <coughs> I know they're. I have to go by there every day. It's it's uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're doing something yeah. with the Arch Creek Canal on the yeah, west side. Yeah, they're okay. putting the pilings in. They're, they're transferring. The, they got these uh, things that they're putting. They're getting it ready for the, the bridge. water through. Yeah. Yeah. They go, yeah. go yeah. back into the canal. <coughs> I think it has something to do with the railroad. I can find yeah. out. Yeah, Blanca, I was to, I was told that it's a, uh, that it's drainage because of the water uh, when the storm came through. They had a lot of water problems, and because of that whole area, <coughs> you know, that's not going to be where the stop is. I think the stop's going to be down on 123rd. But they, wow. they that's what I was told. They've been out here for about a year now. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. before the hurricane. <coughs> yeah, but it's more now. Now I'll find out as I get out of the corner when I came back to 135th when the storm jammed up. That's why I had to go up to 151st. <laughs> um, any other yeah. comments, input? Any, any further <coughs> Chinatown is it still on, or is there any further discussion? Any other just, you know, Chinatown? I understand there's some continuing workshops coming up on Chinatown, right? Mm, no. I know he's holding, the uh, Council no. of the Enemy is holding something coming up, I believe. Councilman <laughs> Dizume, uh, it, it's one of the items in his town hall meeting town tomorrow. Hall meeting, yeah. But <laughs> what happened is they, but <coughs> it, <sorry>. doctors, <laughs> cough drops. <laughs> um, it, we ran out of time at the last CRA meeting after the presentation. The presentation is like about 30 minutes. Um, CRA meetings are generally an hour and 15 minutes, not like, you know, we have the time here. So they had to, you know, postpone it to Tuesday the 14th for them to, to do the vote. Um, but we have been working with several groups, several entities. Actually, uh, Mr. McDermott and I, I, I had mentioned it, we met with a group um, in August and they emailed us. They've secured, they're gonna have their first trade show next year in the spring of 2018. It's like 100,000 square feet of space that they've rented out and everything but they want to work with us because of the Chinatown and have right. their event and all these other items happening here to do the linkage. Um, we so had a good meeting with them. Yeah, sure. it, it was very, very encouraging right. and, and you know, to get the follow-up email that yes, <coughs> after they left us in August, they're back, right. they locked, they locked, they locked the Manor Winwood, the, all the whole space, what is it, the warehouses that they right. had there and they lock that in for their annual trade show that now that they're gonna be having here every year. And so there will be the uh, town hall meeting coming up. Tomorrow, <coughs> tomorrow. tomorrow. Councilman yeah. Dijon is having his district four, which is you know your district, uh, town hall meeting. He's gonna be talking about it, a lot of things. Like today he was having a business workshop mm -hmm. at um, Joe Celestine Center at five o'clock. Unfortunately, I couldn't be yeah. in two places at once. Um, what time, so tomorrow? What time tomorrow is it? Six o'clock, yeah. and at Sunkiss Grove. You see, this time it's at Sunkiss Grove. There you go. <laughs> <coughs> what happened when you went downtown? Where? Like, last meeting. Did we already go through that? Yeah, we already went through that. Yeah, we went through that. Okay, hey everybody. Um, is unless there's any other input or questions, do I hear a motion to adjourn? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it quiet today. I haven't heard you.